Hi, welcome to the video Spring Boot CRUD tutorial. In this video, you will learn how to develop a Java website application based on Spring Boot with Spring MVC, Spring Data JPI, Timelift, Timenet, and MySQL. With me, Nam Haming from CodeJava.net. First, let's review the architecture of the sample project we are going to build in this video tutorial. Uh, you know, we are going to create a Java website application based on Spring Boot technology. Uh, Spring Boot uh, makes use of an embedded web server, which is Tomcat uh, by uh, default. And in the view layer, we use Tamleaf as a templating technology to simplify the coding of the web pages. Tamleaf is similar to ZSP and ZSTL, but it is simpler and more powerful. And in the controller layer, we use Spring MVC to simplify the handling of requests and response uh, from the clients. And in the DIO layer, we use Spring Data JPI to simplify the coding of uh, DIO classes or repository classes. And in the persistent layer, we use Hibernate Framework to map Java objects with tables in the database. And of course, JDBC driver is used to communicate with the underlying database, which is MySQL database in this uh, project. So in this uh, video tutorial, uh, I used uh, JDK8 uh, Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers with Maven as a build system and MySQL as a database. So make sure that you have all of these software programs installed on your computer with the same versions or newer versions. Next, let's understand uh, the website application we are going to develop in this uh, video tutorial. Uh, basically, uh, we uh, develop uh, the web application to manage uh, information of products in the database. So we call it a product manager. Uh, the website uh, provides standard uh, CRUD operations to the users. Create, which update and delete. And then you can see in the home page, uh, the users can see a list of products from the database in the table format like this with the columns, product ID, name, brand, made in, price, and uh, agents. The listing of uh, the products is a retrieve operation and uh, the user can uh, create a new product by click uh, the hyperlink create new product here uh, this is a create operation and to edit uh, update a particular product the user can click the edit hyperlink so this is a update operation and the user can click the delete hyperlink uh, to remove a product from the database. So this is a delete operation. And this is the user interface design of the create new product form that allows the user to enter information of a product to uh, save into the database. As you can see, a product has the following uh, information product name, brand, made in, and price. Click the save button and we uh, save the product information into the database and uh, refresh the product list page. And this is edit a product form that allows the user to update information of a a particular product you can see product ID is read only and then uh, the user can update product name brand made in and price click the save button uh, we update the product information in the database and refresh uh, the product list page and this is a class diagram that helps you understand the main interfaces and uh, classes you are going to code in the project you see 
uh, the domain model class or entity class is product that maps uh, with the product table in the database. It has the fields identical to columns in the database table. And in the DAO layer, we will define the product repository interface that extends the JPA repository interface provided by uh, JPA. Uh, JPA repository interface defines all standard CRUD operations save for create and update, file, file ID for retrieve and delete by ID for delete uh, operations. And in the business service layer, we will call the product service class uh, that uses an instance of the product repository. And in the controller layer, uh, we we code app controller class which is a Spring MVC controller class to handle requests and uh, responses from the clients. It uses an instance of the product service uh, class. And finally, we will write app main class to start Spring Boot web application. Uh, so with Spring Boot, we don't have to write any configuration uh, classes. As it takes care of all the sensible defaults, we just focus on uh, coding the business logic for our application. Before creating the project in Eclipse IDE, let's uh, create the database table product with five fields, as you can see here: ID, name, brand, made in, and uh, price. Using my SQL Workbench program uh, in the database schema name sales DB, so I create table here. Name of the table is uh, product, and the first column is a primary key column ID. Check primary key not null and auto increment. The second column is uh, name. Data type is Vacha Fortify and uh, brand. The man manufacturer of the product and made in the country uh, who made uh, the product and the price of the product. This data type is float and all the columns are not null. So check all not null column here. Okay and click apply cancel okay, because we have a extra column here delete apply apply finish and you see the table product uh, got created here with five columns ID, name, branch, made in price and uh, select all rows from this table and you see the table is empty now next let's create a spring boot project using the spring initialized tool provided by spring developer team so we go to uh, start.spring.io uh, to access uh, the spring initialized tool as you can see here this website allows us to create a, a Spring Boot project. Here we choose a project type is Maven project, language is Java, Spring Boot version is 2.1.3 uh, and enters the project metadata information. The group ID is net.codejava, artifact ID is product manager. Uh, click more options to see more options. Uh, description of the project is uh, Spring Boot CRUD uh, Web App Example. Uh, package name is just uh, net.codejava. Packaging type is Java and Java version is Java 8. 
and uh, in the dependency section we select uh, the required dependencies uh, to develop a Spring MVC Spring Data JBA and timely application so we enter web here for Spring MVC with uh, Tomcat Embedded Server and JPA to uh, use Spring Data JPA and uh, timely for the template engines and uh, MySQL or JDBC driver ok and click the button generate project and we download the uh, zip file to our project directory here spring product manager ok then in Eclipse IDE we import the project zip file uh, which uh, has been downloaded uh, import and select the option uh, projects from folder or archive next and click archive button here to select the zip file uh, under the workspace directory spring uh, product manager here open and uh, select only the uh, expanded uh, directory here click uh, finish here we go the project the project is being imported into Eclipse IDE and uh, it looks like we have some uh, problems here uh, let's open the maven form.xml file to see the dependencies uh, yeah you see we have the uh, spring boot starter parent as a parent form and we have spring boot starter data jpa for using uh, a spring data jpa a spring boot starter web for Developing a Java web application with Tomcat embedded server, Spring Boot started TimeLeap for using a TimeLeap as template engine, and ZDBC driver for MySQL. And we don't need uh, to use test, so delete the dependency for Spring Boot starter test here. Save the file, and we also uh, delete the test. Uh, class here okay and you see the problems uh, have gone and let's explore the generated uh, project you see there's yes, a uh, class product manager application with the main method here this uh, class is used to uh, start our Spring uh, Boot application and application.properties is a properties file um, we uh, specify the database correction properties and other configuration uh, here we use uh, Java 8 and uh, click the Maven dependencies. You can see uh, Maven automatically download uh, various uh, Java files required for the project. You can see Spring Web MVC, Spring Web, Mask, We are Connect, uh, Java, Time Leaf, and so on. Spring Boot Starter. Okay. And now let's configure uh, the database connection properties in the application properties file here. The first property we need to set is spring dot uh, jpa dot hibernate dot ddl hyphen auto equal none. Uh, this uh, tells uh, hibernate 
uh, not to uh, uh, regret uh, make changes uh, to the database keep the database intact unchanged and the second property is spring out data source not uh, URL equal uh, the ZDBC URL uh, that points to uh, our database ZDBC colon double forward slash is localhost colon double three zero six is a part number and the database name is sales db the database name here you see sales db and the third property is the username spring dot data source dot username here i use a username is root and uh, the next property is uh, password Spring dot data source dot password. I use a simple password, so you should change the values, username and password, and ZDBC uh, URL uh, according to the settings on the computer, on the environment. Okay, save the file. And next, let's code uh, the domain model class a product to map with the product table in the database. Yeah, create a new Java class under the package uh, net not code Java here. Class name is uh, product. Finish. And we use the uh, the BA annotation entity to specify this class is an entity and that is managed by uh, uh, entity manager factory entity from Zavax not persistent here and we uh, specify a file uh, fields for the this class. Uh, according to the five columns in the database ID, name, brand, made in, and price here. Private long ID, private string name, brand, made in. Note that the name of the fields in this class here should be identical to the names of the columns in the database table here so we minimize the need to use uh, columns annotation and the last uh, few is the price and we generate a constructor for this class Source generate constructor from super class. Okay. And generate getters and setters. Generate getters and setters. Check all the uh, fields. Okay. And you see, we have uh, several getters and setters for this domain model class, NDD class. Now we need to use some annotations for the ID uh, view of this class in the getter method get ID here. We use the uh, annotation as ID from uh, the PA to indicate that uh, uh, this maps to the ID to a primary column in the database. And the next annotation we need to use to specify the generation uh, strategy for this primary uh, ID column. We use a uh, annotation generated value from uh, JPA.
strategy is generation type dot uh, identity so that's all we need to write code for the entity domain model class it's very simple and next we need to code a repository interface the product repository interface to tell Spring uh, Data API uh, the type of the domain model class uh, to work with. So, create a new interface uh, for the project here. New interface. The name of the interface is Product Repository. Finished. And as you can see, this interface should extend the uh, JPA repository interface provided by Spring uh, Data JPA. So we extend here, extend JPA repository. And we need to tell Spring Data JPA is a type of the domain model class to work with is uh, a product and the type of the domain type id is long uh, which is the type of the uh, id field here you see so basically the purpose of declaring this interface is to uh, specify the uh, type of the domain entity class and the uh, type of each id uh, so Spring Data BI can generate uh, a proxy instance of the implementation of this interface at runtime, and you can see the JPI repository interface uh, already defines uh, standard uh, CRUD methods here. You see, file was saved. Uh, so uh, we don't have to write any uh, uh, specific ZDBC code or uh, DAO uh, code. Just declare this interface for the standard CRUD operations. And uh, you know, this greatly uh, really simplifies the way we uh, code uh, the DAO layer in our project. And we can avoid uh, writing a boiler bread code. And next, we code a product, the product service class here that acts as a middle uh, man between the uh, controller layer and the repository, the DAO layer. The product service uh, class uses an instance of the product repository here. So, Create a new Java class here. Product service. We are annotate this class with the service annotation from Spring. Service. So at runtime, uh, Spring framework, we uh, uh, manage an instance of this uh, service class. And we declare a private field that refers to the product repository interface here, repo. And to let Spring Framework automatically inject an instance of the product repository, we use a annotation auto wire. Auto -wire. And in this service class, uh, we uh, implement the basic uh, CRUD methods, list all, save, get, and delete. The first method is uh, list all method that return a list of uh, product. Product list all. We simply delegate the code to the repository instance here. Repo.io. Uh, 
uh, and uh, in uh, practice uh, the code in the list of method here may uh, grow or may uh, evolve more complex so we uh, code this uh, service class for the purpose of, uh, purpose of extensibility in the future and the second method to uh, save uh, create or update a product public void save product product and we simply uh, delegate the code to uh, the repo you can see the save method here is already defined by uh, Spring Data API in the interface as API repository so we just reuse we don't have to write any uh, implementation code for repository for the DIO layer so that's uh, very uh, cool it saves us a lot of time and we don't need to write boilerplate code over and over and the third method is the red method that uh, retrieves a product by ID public product red long ID and we are also just uh, delegate the code to the repository instant repo file by ID ID this return an option the uh, object so we call it get method to return the actual uh, value object which is a product here and the last method we need to implement in this service class to delete a uh, product by ID delete long ID just delegate the code to the repository instance delete my ID ID okay that's for the product service class uh, you can see the methods file save file by ID delete by ID are defined by Spring Data API and we don't have to write any email implementation code for those methods so that's uh, very cool just uh, declare the repository interface here and call is uh, the define method predefined method and at runtime spring uh, data API we uh, generate implementation code and inject uh, the instance of product uh, repository uh, to this uh, class next we code the spring FVC controller class app controller to handle request uh, from the client this controller class has a reference uh, to an instance of the product uh, service uh, class here so create a new class here app controller we annotated this class with the spring uh, controller annotation and we declare a private uh, instant fields a proc service service that refers to an instance of the proc service class and we use the annotation uh, auto y to let spring uh, framework automatically inject in an instance of the proc service class auto y annotation and we will code the handler methods in this controller class the first uh, handler method is uh, view home page uh, that handles a request uh, come to the website home page and in the home page we display a list of um, products public string view home page
and we use the annotation uh, request mapping from Spring MPC. And we specify the URL is for what's the last to map to the home page and in the, this error method we uh, return the logical view name we use the name index so return index now let's implement the list products feature this feature allows the user to see a list of products in the website homepage as you can see here so in this handler method we need to get a list of products uh, from the service list product list products equal service uh, list all and we need to set uh, this object list uh, products to the model so we declare a, a model parameter here from a spring mvc model at attribute sorry at attribute attribute named is a list products and value is the object list and products and uh, because we use time lift for the view uh, we need to create the template directory uh, under the uh, src main resources here template here if you can see the template directory here we put our uh, view files HTML file here so create a new HTML file HTML now the name of the file should match as a logical view name index here uh, index.html And we uh, change the title to Product Manager. Now we can run our Spring Boot application to test if the server uh, is uh, running or not to see the home page. And now we run the class Product Manager application. Run as uh, Java application and you can see Spring Boot logo appears in the console we got an error fail to determine a suitable uh, driver class and that means we may miss uh, write dependency for the JDBC driver in the Maven form XML file here. Oh, dependency for MySQL connector Java. You see, correct. Let's see the application properties file here. A spring dot data source dot url correct and username dot password spring dot zpa dot hybrid dia auto none oh everything seems uh, to be correct Sorry, the URL of the ADBC URL is um, ADBC 
colon MySQL colon. Okay. Now run the application again. We got another error. The bin validation API is on the cost path, but no implementation could be found. Add an implementation so as hybrid validator to the cost path. Let's check the Maven dependencies here. Hibernate validator. We have Hibernate validator here. So let's try to fix this problem by uh, deleting all the draft files in the Maven repository directory because I think some files are not corrupted. So open the uh, Maven Maven repository directory in the uh, user directory here go into the user directory and if you can see the dot m2 directory here this is a repository of uh, maven on the local computer so i delete uh, all these uh, jar files Okay, so now go back to Eclipse IDE, right click on the project and select Maven Update Project. Okay, and wait for Maven to uh, download the jar files again. This may take a few minutes. Okay, so Maven uh, has finished uh, updating the project. I open the Maven dependencies here. You can see we have the hyperlink validator. Hyperlink validator. Yeah. Okay. Now let's run the application again. And you can see the application is now up and running. You can see started and uh, manage the application to get started on port 8080. Now let's open a uh, web browser to access uh, the website homepage HTTP uh, localhost 8080. And then we can see a blank base with the title Product Manager. Uh, that means our Spring Boot Web application is up and running. You can see in the log uh, initializing uh, Spring Dispatcher submit here. Very good, right? Now let's stop the application. You can see. Uh, this is the uh, index.htm page. You can see we have that's only the title. Now we uh, specify a div uh, section here. The line is center. And we specify the heading one um, product manager. Product manager. Mm -hmm. 
and to use uh, time lift template we need to specify uh, XML namespace for time lift in the HTML tag here XML ns colon th equal to HTTP uh, colon double forward slash ww dot uh, time lift dot org and we create a table to display a list of uh, product as per the user interface design here this table has uh, a border the heading of the table We have the heading uh, product ID, name, brand, made in, price, and actions. Name, brand, made in, price, and uh, actions. Because we are developing a Spring Boot application, a standalone Java application, so each time we make change, make changes to the code to the HTML, we need to restart the application. And it's the small disadvantage of using a Spring Boot. So we start the application again. Okay, and let's uh, refresh. And you can see the heading block manager and the heading of the table appears here. So far, so good, right? And now let's use uh, time leaf syntax to display the list of products. And you can see in the controller, in the handler method, we already send a uh, model object model attribute list product here so in the view based we need to use time lift syntax uh, table body yeah we used uh, the time lift syntax th colon h to iterate through the correction for each product in the correction list product you can see the name list product should match the name of the attribute we specify in the uh, handler method here and then we specify a value for each um, column product ID uh, with uh, time lip we specify the H column text equal product dot ID the text product ID here is a static text so uh, we can see the HTML paste uh, alone in the browser without running a web server. That's uh, an advantage of using time lift over the SP and the SDL. And the next column value is for name product dot name and brand. And uh, made in made in country 
made in the name of the uh, properties here should match the few names in the domain model class here you see ID, name, plan, made in and price and the last uh, column is product and price and this here for the actions column okay set the file try to refresh the web page and you see uh, nothing uh, happened because we are running a spring boot application and a standalone application so we need to restart the application Okay, and now let's refresh. You can see uh, nothing is shown here because the uh, table of product in the database is empty. Now let's uh, insert some rows into the product table here. The first product is iPhone. X brand is Apple and made in China. Price is about one thousand two hundred dollars. Second product is uh, Samsung Galaxy A7. Brand is Samsung, made in uh, Korea, and the price is about nine hundred dollars. Just uh, two products. Click apply. Apply finished and in the table of product uh, we have two rows now and now let's refresh our web application here and we should see two products you see two products appears iPhone X Samsung Galaxy very good right let's update the home page a little bit to make more room for the table cells here yeah, we specify attribute cell bedding uh, for the table equal 10 pixel okay and um, uh, in the application properties file, uh, you can specify a uh, property to uh, change the logging level to reduce the amount of uh, logging information in the uh, console. So here we specify logging dot level for the root appender to warn. So only warning or error message uh, will be displayed in the log. Okay, stop the application and restart. And we insert uh, another row into the database. Now, this um, X box brand is Microsoft, made in uh, the USA. I is uh, 699 apply apply finish you see our spring boot web application is up and running and now you can see only spring boot logo and a warning message because we have specified the logging level to word warning now refresh our website home page and we should see three products you see three products appear here Next, we are going to implement the great new product feature that allows the user to uh, uh, create a new product and save its information into the database. In the home page, uh, there's a hybrid create new product here. So we uh, update the homepage index.html 
stop the application yeah career new product and the uh, directive url is uh, new have to uh, uh, break lines here okay and we need to code a corresponding handle method in the controller class yeah to handle the relative area of new year to display the uh, new product form so we uh, create a new product new method so new product form Uh, we map this hello method to the uh, relative URL uh, for slash new. And we specify a model object as a method parameter here. And we return the view name. Logical view name is new underscore product. And in this method, we create a new uh, empty product object new product and set it as a model attribute add attribute name is uh, product and value is a object product so in the view page uh, new product uh, we can uh, map the fields of the class to the text fields of the HTML form okay now let's create a template file here new answer HTML file mm, the file name is new underscore product change the title of the page to um, create new product you can copy the namespace of template here and in this uh, best we create a new form new product form that looks like this with four fields like product name brand made in and price and a save button create a deep section and with a right center and uh, the heading of the best is create new product and we use the form uh, since we use template as template we specify the uh, dust for the action and the actual value we specify in the property th uh, colon action equal and this is the syntax of uh, template for a relative URL and uh, it, it important to specify the object command object uh, so spring uh, MVC can uh, read uh, the object with the fields in the form into a Java object the name of the object here should uh, match the name we uh, Specify in the handler method here. Product here. Okay. And method of the form is uh, of course post. And inside this form, we use table to dis display the text fields. No border. So that is ten pixel. And 
the first uh, row is uh, to let the user enter product name product name and we use an input few input type equal text and with time leap we specify the attribute ds colon few and uh, asterisk uh, name of the few yeah name is the name of the product now let's run the application to see Okay, the server is up and running. Now let's refresh the home page. You see we have the hybrid create new product here. Click here. And you see the create new product form appears with um, only one few project name. Now we add uh, more fields. And the second input field is for uh, Brand, brand name of the product. Copy and paste. And change the label, brand, and the field name of the field is brand. And similarly for the next uh, text field is made in. Made in. And the last few is the price of the product. Price. Price. And uh, lastly, we specify the create the uh, submit button. This uh, column will span over two columns and we use the button tag equal submit save. Okay, so that's the code for the uh, new product form. And now let's uh, code the hello method for the action save here in the controller class. We need to code the uh, handler method here. Public string set product. We use uh, request mapping annotation. The, here we need to specify two uh, arguments. And the first value is a relative URL save, and the second is a method of the form. Uh, request method post and uh, we use the uh, annotation model attribute model attribute from Spring uh, MVC. Uh, the name of the model is product 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 import from a uh, uh, spring and work okay you see we need to use this uh, annotation model attribute product and the object type product to a uh, map with uh, the product name in the new form here so spring uh, framework we automatically populate the values of the field in this form into a product object so that saves a lot of time right 
we don't have to write code to get uh, the uh, input values of the form fields that declares this mono attribute and spring frame work spring mvc takes care of all the details and uh, we simply call service save uh, product and uh, after the product has been saved into the database we uh, return to the home page or we uh, return uh, a redirect string that means redirect to the home page redirect uh, colon forward slash okay now we can uh, test the create new product feature restarting uh, our application Okay, now let's uh, refresh. You can see the great new product form appears here. Now, and the new product name is um, uh, Rocho uh, 3550, brand is uh, Dell, made in Malaysia. Uh, price is about $899. Click save button. And you see, virtual 3550 Dell Malaysia 899 appears here. That means uh, the great new product uh, feature is working uh, as expected. Let's check the database here in uh, MySQL Workbench. Uh, execute this select statement. And you see uh, the new row for virtual uh, 3550 appears here. Very good, right? Next, let's uh, implement the edit product feature that allows um, the user to uh, update information of a particular product. You see, next to a product in this table, there's a uh, edit happening here. And when the user clicks on the this edit happening, the edit uh, product form appears uh, that uh, looks like this. Product ID is read only, and uh, the other fields, product name, brand, made in, and price can be updated. And click the save button. We update the information of the product to the database and refresh the home page uh, to refresh the list of products. Okay, go back to our Eclipse IDE, stop the Spring Boot web application and in the product list we specify a hyperlink for the edit action here. Edit. And uh, with the uh, Time brief we use the attribute ts colon s uh, reference and uh, this is the syntax of uh, time brief to specify the retrieve URL edit and uh, with the ID of the product product. ID. Okay. And uh, we need to code a handler method in the controller class to uh, get the details of the product and display the uh, drug information in the edit product form. So that looks like this. You see. So in the controller class, we create a new handler method that's similar to this one. So we can copy and paste. The name of the method is so edit product form, and the related URL is edit uh, post last uh, ID. Is a uh, 
uh, but variable and to map the but variable to the handle method we specify the annotation but variable name is id and uh, cast the id to integer value We return a model and a view object in this element. Uh, create new model and view object here. And we view uh, the name of the view is uh, edit underscore product and return the model and view object and uh, we need to get uh, the details of the selected product by id product product equals service get id and we add this product object uh, to the model and view add object attribute name is product and value is object product uh, this get method takes long no problem we change it to long ok and next we need to code the template the view page edit underscore product it looks similar to the uh, new product form so we can reuse the code copy the code copy here and paste and change the name to edit underscore product not html and let's modify the title of the base is edit product and the heading of the page is uh, edit product the action of the form is set we uh, use the same hello method uh, for the edit form uh, comment object is product method is post and uh, as you can see in the design here we have the product id field which is read only so we need to specify product id view here <coughs> product id here change to id and specify the read only uh, attribute for the text view Okay, that's it. And uh, let's run the application to test the edit product form. Refresh. We got an error here, and let's see. Could not pass as expression. Okay. In the index.atl file here. Oh, we need to remove the false last at the beginning here. Okay. Uh, stop and start the application again. Spring Boot web application. Refresh. Click edit the iPhone X. You can see the hybrid edit appears here.
and notice the EOL in the status bar of the browser. And you can see the edit product form appears for iPhone X and edit Samsung Galaxy A7. You see, product ID is read only, and as a few can be updated. Back. Okay, now let's uh, implement. Uh, uh, we don't need to uh, write handle code to update the uh, product because we reuse the uh, uh, save method here. Now let's try to edit iPhone iPhone X uh, iPhone X um, Max Apple Apple Incorporated made in um, China Republic, for example. And the price is uh, 1299. Uh, click save. And you can see the list of products. Uh, got refreshed. iPhone X Mark Apple Incorporated China Republic 1299. Very good, right? And let's try to edit the uh, uh, watch show uh, 3550 uh, made in uh, Thailand. Save, you see, made in Thailand, and let's uh, check the database. I see, give the select statement again, and you see, uh, watch show uh, made in Thailand, uh, iPhone uh, X Max, China Republic, very good, right? And finally, we implement the delete product feature. That allows uh, the user to remove uh, a product information from uh, the database. And you can see in the home page, in the product list, we have a hyperlink delete next to the edit hyperlink here. So we uh, write code for that hyperlink uh, delete in the home page here. Uh, copy and modify. Uh, get some uh, spaces here. Between uh, two high blinks, uh, this should be a uh, delete. Okay, stop the Spring Boot application first, and let's call the handler method in the Spring MVC controller controller class here. This should be a uh, delete. Like string delete product um, copy the path variable here because we also need to read the product ID and here we will simply call service delete ID and uh, after the product has been removed from the database we uh, Redirect to the website homepage. So we turn redirect for what's last. Okay. Now let's uh, run the application to test the delete uh, product feature. Refresh the homepage. And uh, let's try to delete. Yeah. Samsung Galaxy A7. Oh, sorry, the tag here should be delete. Mm. So, uh, modify. Delete. Start the uh, Spring Boot application again. Okay, let's refresh. Yeah, the delete happening here. Yeah. Delete Samsung Galaxy A7. You see, it has been removed. And yeah, let's check the database. Refresh. You see, Samsung Galaxy has been deleted. Very good, right? 
I try to delete the Xbox. You see, it has been deleted. You see, Xbox um, is no longer here. Very good, right? So far, we have implemented all the correct uh, functionalities for the um, product manager website application. Create new product, uh, list all products, edit and delete uh, product. Now it's time to package our Spring Boot uh, application as a standalone uh, jar file. To do so, we right click on the project and select uh, run as uh, Maven View and specify uh, the role is uh, package run. And this is a login of Maven. It may need to download uh, additional uh, dependencies, additional data files for the build process. So it may take a few minutes. And you see. As a viewer success. And let's open the uh, project directory to see product manager does it. And you can see a Java file uh, has been generated here. This is a uh, executable Java file for our a Spring Boot application, and now we can use a Java command to uh, run this uh, program. So I open Java command and change the current directory to this uh, project directory. Now I can use Java command Java ja. product manager slash ja. And as you see, Spring Boot logo appears to start the embedded uh, Tomcat server. You see an exception already in use because we uh, still have the application running in uh, Eclipse here so we need to terminate it okay close Eclipse that's it and uh, run again you see uh, our Spring Boot web application is up and running. Now let's test it in Chrome browser. We see the product list here. Create a new product, uh, Samsung Galaxy A7 brand Samsung made in Korea. And the price is uh, 1999. See? You see. Samsung added here and let's edit the uh, iPhone uh, made in uh, mm, Malaysia for example so you see it is updated and let's delete virtual delete you see very good right so far we have done uh, developing a Spring Boot uh, web application to perform CRUD operations to manage uh, product information uh, with uh, Spring RVC, Spring Data JPI, Timelift, Hymnet, and MySQL. And you see, with Spring Boot, uh, uh, it greatly really simplifies uh, the coding. We don't have to write a boilerplate code for the uh, DIO uh, classes for the data access layer. 
and uh, we jump uh, uh, quickly into the uh, main business logic of the application instead of wasting time in configurations and uh, boilerplate code so uh, thank you for watching and uh, uh, click subscribe to uh, uh, follow us